trigger warning, there are bugs in this one. Well, hi there. I'm here today with bugs. Lots of bugs, actually no bugs, but a lot of insects. Because we want to talk to you about feeder insects. When it comes to keeping reptiles, most of them are either going to feed on rodent feeders or insect feeders. That's going to be the, the bulk uh, of all of your, your lizards and snakes. And your lizards, most of them are going to feed on insects. And so, when you decide to get a lizard, or when you're trying to decide if a lizard is right for you, you also need to decide, are the feeders for that particular lizard going to work for your lifestyle? We've already done a video about how to prepare frozen thought rodents. So, you know, if you're thinking a snake is for you, check that video out because those are the feeders you're going to need. But we want to make sure that you know what awesome feeders are out there when it comes to insect feeders. And so we've compiled this list of five of the best insect feeders you can possibly get for your lizards and other insect eating animals. To make it on this list, it needs to fulfill three criteria. First, it needs to be relatively inexpensive. They also, look at that, cockroach tower. They also need to be nutritious for lizards or, or other animals that would be eating them. And last, they need to be widely available. Now, I understand that in different parts of the world, different insects are not going to be available, but generally speaking, these are some of the most common and widely available in the reptile hobby that meet those other two criteria. First on our list are one of the most widely available insect feeders of all, and those are crickets. Crickets, uh, uh, well, along with telling you about the pros and cons of them as feeders, I also want to talk to you a little bit about insects, because insects are cool. And, and one of the neat things about crickets is they're what you call a hemimetabolous insect, which just means that the babies are essentially exactly the same as the adults, just littler. And they just, every time they molt, they get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and so they start off as little crickets, and they end up as big crickets with wings, and that's pretty much their whole, whole lifespan. You can tell from a fairly early age which ones are males and which ones are females, because the females will have a little black, kind of a stick or like a spear sticking out of the back of their abdomen, which is the very back segment of their body. Insects have three body segments, the head, the thorax and the abdomen. The head's the part with the eyes and the mouth and the antenna. The thorax is where all their legs come out of, and the abdomen is that part out back. And at the back of the abdomen, they've all got two little things called CRC sticking out there, but the females have a big black ovipositor, which is used to lay eggs. And they'll start to develop that even before they're adults. So that's how you can tell the males from the females. But it's, it's nice because crickets start really small and they get to be a fairly decent size. And so, no matter what size animal you're feeding, there's probably a cricket that's appropriate for them. One of the other big pros to crickets is just that they're extremely active. That's, that's probably honestly the best thing about crickets, is they're always on the move. They don't tend to just hunker down, which makes them very attractive prey for lots of movement-stimulated feeders. Uh, some insect feeders will basically burrow down and hide as soon as you put them in there, and then they might just live out the rest of their lives in that enclosure, which is not ideal. Crickets aren't going to do that. Crickets might hide for five minutes, but they're going to pop out and they're going to run all over the place. Crickets are explorers, and that tends to backfire on them when they're in the enclosure of something you're intending to have eat them. Crickets are also very, very easy to breed. Very easy to breed you pretty much just need some sort of a box that they can't escape from and put some soil at the bottom of that that you keep moderately humid and then you feed them and they will just, they'll use that ovipositor, that big long stick sticking out of the back of their abdomen, they'll just poke eggs down into the soil and those eggs will hatch and voila, you've made crickets. There are some cons to crickets though. I choose not to breed crickets myself, I just buy crickets because of these cons. They're high maintenance, uh, you know, they're, they're easy to feed, but you do have to feed them and water them regularly or they'll die pretty quickly. Crickets don't seem to last a long time unless you're really diligent with their care. They're also noisy. This is the biggest reason that I don't breed my own crickets is because the males are noisy. They're so loud. And honestly, something that I do whenever I buy crickets is that night, 
Usually I feed all the males to stuff. And that's why I told you how to tell the difference between the males and the females. I feed all the adult males. Those are the ones with wings, but no ovipositor. I feed them to anything that'll eat them so that they're not chirping and driving me crazy. I like the sound of crickets, but not when it's like 200 of them. The babies also climb really well. So when you're creating a box to keep them in to breed them, make sure it's something that even the tiny little babies can't climb out of. That might mean that you need to put something slippery near the top so they can't get out or have a really good lid on it. And then, you know, I've already mentioned this a little bit, but large crickets don't live very long. So when you buy adults, they're not going to last too long. They also can potentially be dangerous. Uh, they're kind of prone to nibbling on reptiles sometimes, so you don't really want to put them in the enclosure in quantities beyond what that reptile will eat in a sitting, and probably pull them out if they don't get eaten. So there are a lot of cons to crickets, but they are a great feeder, and they're easy to breed if you can put up with those cons. They're also very easy to buy because they're probably the most widely available insect feeder of them all. So you can find them at any pet shop, and that's awesome. With every one of these insects, I want to give you a little pro tip, like something that I've learned over the years dealing with them. And the pro tip for crickets is to buy them in quantities that you'll use over a pretty short time frame. That, that's what I do. You know, it would be wonderful to buy them in, you know, 5,000 lots because it would be cheaper. But I buy them, you know, maybe 50 to 100 at a time, whatever I'm going to feed off within just a few days because they won't live very long and I gotta deal with all the noisiness and the, the upkeep if I'm gonna keep them much longer than that. Next on our list of five of the best insect feeders you could possibly get are mealworms. I really like mealworms. I have mealworms all the time. Mealworms, I, I talked to you about how crickets are hemimetabolous, which means they have an incomplete metamorphosis. They just start as little crickets and become big crickets. Mealworms are not that. Mealworms are what is called hollow metabolists, which means they have a complete metamorphosis. They start out as one thing, and as adults they're like something completely different. Mealworms start out life looking like this wormy little grub thing. And at some point they will metamorphose into a pupa, which looks essentially like the aliens from Men in Black. And then pop! Voila! They'll molt out of that, and they will be beetles. So mealworms are actually larval beetles, which a lot of people have no idea that's the case. There are a lot of pros to these guys. For starters, they're very easy to breed. Uh, essentially, all you need to do is get some mealworms and put them in a big bucket of meal. Uh, and I mean like oatmeal or uh, just some sort of grain meal. And they will just live in there. So I, I give them a little bit of extra crested gecko diet for moisture, otherwise you'll want to put something else in there with them occasionally for moisture, like a little piece of potato, a little piece of carrot, something like that. But generally speaking, it doesn't require any work. You just put them in the meal, they're going to go through their life cycle, they'll pupate into adults, and then you've got adult beetles, and those adult beetles will lay eggs, and then you'll have these tiniest little mealworms. One day you'll come in there and you'll notice that you know, if you lift up your meal, you'll notice just the tiniest mealworms in the world. So tiny. And those will start to grow up and you'll just have all these generations of mealworms just going on. Basically no work except just making sure they have some moist food every now and then. Like I said, they're low maintenance. They're inexpensive. I mean, you can have an, an eternal colony of them for like $5. You buy $5 worth of mealworms. In fact, you can order them right off of Amazon. We've got links down in the description actually to all of the insect feeders in this video, but totally just buy one cup of mealworms, dump them in some meal, leave them for you know, two months, and you will have mealworms for life. Awesome. Like I mentioned, inexpensive, they become almost free after a while. They're a great staple diet for a lot of different reptiles, and they're widely, widely available. Just absolutely great feeders, but they're not perfect. There are some cons associated with mealworms. Uh, mostly that they, because they're small, they've got a lot of surface area and not a lot of inside goo, right? And the inside goo is where most of the, most of the nutrients are. The outside is mostly made of chitin, which is a sugar compound that's very difficult for most animals to digest. And so they're kind of a lot of roughage and not a lot of goody insides. And so most reptiles don't do well on a diet of exclusively mealworms. They're also small. 
which means they don't have a lot of gooey inside, and it also means that, you know, if you were going to feed them to something large, they'd need to eat just millions of them. My pro tip is something I already mentioned, but just buy one bucket, like one little container of mealworms, dump them in a bucket of meal, infinity mealworms. <laughs> There's no reason not to have mealworms. Next on our list of five of the best insect feeders you could possibly get are Drosophila fruit flies. Drosophila fruit flies, like the beetles that we've talked about and that we will continue to talk about, are hollow metabolous insects. They have a complete metamorphosis, which means they start out their life as, well, maggots. That's actually the name for a larval fly, is a maggot. So they're, they're tiny little worm things that are super gross looking. And those will live down in this paste. Uh, you mix up this paste, you can order bags of fruit fly paste, or there are a lot of recipes online. We'll have, we'll have links to where you can get the, the food for fruit flies and cups and this stuff in here, which is called seltzer, and, and uh, everything you would need to keep fruit flies, including fruit flies themselves. But you mix up this paste, you put the seltzer in there so they don't drown in it, and then you just dump a fruit, few flies in there. They lay eggs, and these goofy little maggots eventually start living in the paste. They live off of the paste, and when they're ready to develop into flies, they'll come up and they'll molt into a pupa, which are these little brown guys that you see along the edge of the cup here. And when you start to see those, you know your colony is about ready to explode. And then, voila, fruit flies. And flies would be just a horrible feeder insect, except for the fact that Drosophila fruit flies and a few other species of, of flies have actually been used for genetics research for decades. And so we have all kinds of weird morphs of fruit flies, including a number of different morphs that can't fly. So they're walks, they're not flies anymore. And so fruit walks make outstanding tiny feeders for things that need to eat little bitty insects. Among the pros are the fact that they're extremely fecund. If you, which means they have a lot of babies, if you mix up a little bit of this mixture and put like five flies in there, in two weeks you'll just have hundreds of them, hundreds and hundreds of them. They're, they're really good at making more flies. A lot of people often ask, you know, what, what are like mosquitoes good for? Or what are flies good for? Flies are good for making more flies and they do it better than anything else in the world. Nothing makes flies better than flies. Next on our list of five of the best insect feeders you can possibly get are superworms. Superworms, uh, as far as their life stages go, are basically identical to mealworms. They are beetle larvae and they start out their life as pretty small little beetle larvae. They molt bigger, 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 bigger. They eventually pupate into an alien from uh, Independence Day, and then they become beetles. But they're much larger beetles than our mealworm beetles. A and as a result, superworms are just way bigger than mealworms, which makes them great feeders for kind of a different class of reptiles. One big difference between superworms and mealworms is that superworms seem to do best if you're breeding them on some sort of a, a soil that you keep a little bit moist. That seems to be what's best for them. Feeding them is a little bit harder. Getting them to pupate is more complicated, largely because I think they're more prone to eating each other when they're pupating. So in order to get them to pupate, you need to take a, a beetle larva, one of the superworms, take a big fat juicy superworm, take it and put it in like a film canister or something where it can be by itself and it will curl into a C shape and it'll hang out there and then it will pupate. If you leave it with other superworms it will never pupate. So you have to take them out, put them in the, by themselves and then they'll pupate into adults. And then you can put those adults in with each other, they'll breed and they seem to do better on soil than they do in the meal, which means that you need to be feeding everything independently. I personally find Mealworms to be so easy to breed that there's no reason not to. Superworms, I don't choose to breed myself. It's very doable, but I don't choose to because I can buy them in like thousand lots for not a whole lot of money, uh, maybe 2000 at a time. They live for quite a while in just a big bin full of superworms as long as you're providing them with food. And so for me, that's the easier way to go. But I'll get to that in a minute. There are a lot of pros to these guys. For starters, they're bigger. They're bigger than mealworms. So, you know, really similar to mealworms, just bigger. And that's great. 
It, it also means that they have less surface area compared to their volume, so there's more good goo inside. Even though they actually have a higher total amount of chitin, they've got a lower percentage of chitin, if that makes sense. It does if you understand the ratio between surface area and volume, but you might not. It, just as a little teaser, the ratio between surface area and volume is the reason that if a mouse falls out of an airplane, it'll bounce and go, ow, and then run away. If a person falls out of an airplane, uh, they break, but they don't, like, always die. Some people survive free fall, but usually you do. But they say that a horse will splash. And that's all I have to say about that. Like I mentioned, they're harder to breed than mealworms, but it's doable and they're available in huge lots for really reasonable prices. So that's a huge pro. They're low maintenance. I told you crickets are high maintenance. These are low maintenance. You can just have a big bucket full of these for quite a while and they'll do great. They also don't make any noise like crickets do. So, I mean, other than just hearing them moving around in there, they're not just calling to each other and chirping. They're just pretty quiet. You can just keep them in a drawer and not think about them except to throw a little food in there every now and then and then pull some out and feed them to stuff. And like I said, they're hardy. I love superworms. They're one of my staple feeders. There are some cons though. They're harder to breed than really anything else on this list. I mean, they're the only thing that you're having to put work into just making them become adults. Uh, they're high in chitin and they are potentially dangerous. Uh, you know, they're, they're a carnivorous larva in a lot of cases and so it's unlikely that they would hurt your reptile, but if your reptile is in poor health or something, then they could potentially come over and chew on it, and you don't want them. My pro tip, I've already mentioned this, buy them at least a thousand at a time and just have a bucket full of superworms all the time. There's just no reason not to have that. And then, you know, even if your staple feeder is something else like crickets or dubia roaches, which we'll mention in a second, you'll always have those on hand. And so you'll always have some insect feeders. And that's awesome. Last, and by a mile the best, of the best insect feeders that you could possibly get are Dubia cockroaches. Dubia cockroaches are amazing, but I want to start off by talking to you about their life stages. Dubia cockroaches, like crickets, are hemimetabolous insects, which means they have an incomplete metamorphosis meaning that they start out life as essentially tiny little cockroaches and they grow up into bigger cockroaches and the adults have wings. These are the best insect feeder of all. I mean, if, if there were some reason that you could only have one insect feeder, which isn't the way to go, these are, these are the one. They're it. They're amazing for almost everything. I've already told you, they're my favorite feeder. They're so good. For starters, a huge range of sizes in these guys. These are the biggest insect feeder that we have on this list, but when they first are born, because they actually have live birth, they, they, their eggs uh, on something called an utheca, which occasionally you'll see the females stick out of the back of their abdomen to dry it a little bit, which is unusual, but they, they come out live. They're, they're essentially born from mom, and those babies are pretty small. I mean, they're not as small as fruit flies or, or little bitty mealworms, but they're smaller than large mealworms. They're real little. Almost any reptile is gonna be able to eat a dubia roach at some point in its, in its life. They also get real big. They're the biggest insect feeder here, and so they're adequate for really pretty good sized reptiles too, and that's spectacular. I mean, one dubia roach is the equivalent of a whole bunch of crickets or even you know superworms definitely mealworms, and it's a lifetime supply of fruit flies. They don't have a lot of spines or anything. I, I, I like other cockroaches like uh, Madagascar hissing cockroaches, but I actually kind of like them as pets more than I like them as feeders, and they're covered in spines. These guys don't have any spines. They also don't climb very many slippery surfaces, which makes them very easy to contain. Like I mentioned, Madagascar hissing cockroaches, those will climb right up the wall. Crickets will climb right up the wall. These guys don't climb up most surfaces, and that is awesome. That's really the downside of almost all other types of cockroaches. These guys don't do that. They're not going to hurt your animal, honestly, uh, at all. They're not going to come over and chew on your animal unless your animal has died of other causes. They're stupendously easy to breed. You just put them in a bucket. They do need a little bit of heat. Uh, so something like a heat mat, or I just keep them close to heat lamps that are heating other animals. They need a heat source, which is actually a huge pro because it means they're not going to breed in your house if they get away. 
but if they have enough warmth, they're just going to breed. You just you feed them, and and I you know I feed them my excess produce scraps from other animals or just from our eating. You know, like extra old old fruit and vegetable. When my wife makes juice, I, I have her say all the juice pulp and we throw everything in it you know i hate not having a dubia colony because when i have a dubia colony nothing goes to waste they clean up everything i told you i give some of my crested gecko diet my extra crested gecko diet to my male worms i give almost all of it to my dubia colony they just are my cleanup crew and they turn all of my waste my waste produce my waste crested gecko diet extra uh meat sometimes they just turn that into insect feeders how does it get any better than that? There are a few cons, though I think they're the best insect feeder in the world. They're not perfect. They do tend to hunker down. So once you put them in an enclosure, they're usually looking for a place to hide. They don't just continue to roam around like crickets will. They also need heat in order to breed, which is great because it means they won't breed in your house, but it stinks because it does mean you need to supply it some sort of heat to them. And also, they're a cockroach, and some people have real problems with cockroaches, more, more so than people have with other insects. But honestly, I mean, if you wanted a pet insect, it's hard to have a better pet insect than these guys. They're easy to handle, they're friendly, they're not gonna bite you, they're clean, they're easy to feed, easy to care for, they're just great, they're just great. My pro tip is to definitely get a Dubia Roach colony. Just get one, get a bin. Uh, you know, the slipperier the sides are, the better. There's no reason not to have one. They'll just, you know, you just throw your extra produce scrubs in there. They will turn your way, your food waste into insect feeders. There is no reason not to have a dubia colony. It just fills you with sadness when you don't have one. I, I'm, it, it, I'm so weird these days. I've been weird my whole life, but I'm extra weird these days because now I'll see like an, an apple core in a parking lot. I'm like, hmm, should I take that home? That's what weird people think. But that's what it's like having dubia roaches because nothing goes to waste. I love them. These are, these are great feeder insects, all of them, and I, I recommend as many different insect feeders as possible for your reptiles. Obviously, because of size differences, not all of them are appropriate for all reptiles, but if you're looking to breed insects, if you're just looking for insects that you can pick up cheap, these are the best. These are absolutely five of the very best insect feeders, arguably five, the five best insect feeders in the whole world. We also have links down in the description for every one of these insect feeders. So if you're looking to start your own colony or just buy them as regular feeders, you can even subscribe so that they send them to you on regular intervals. Definitely check out those links and it would help us out if you used them. So please do. Patreon! Thank you guys so much. You have no idea how many insect feeders you help us buy to support this channel. We really appreciate all of your help. It makes a huge difference. As always, like and subscribe. We hope to see you real soon. Last and head and shoulders the best on our list of five of the best pet insects. No. <laughs> this has been the best video ever for just looks on Jason's face. That is Nova Positor. Wow. <laughs> now that is Nova Positor. <laughs> He's looking at me. Hi. <laughs> What's up? Don't call the maggots disgusting. They hate that. This is genuinely gross. They, they're flightless, so they oh. can't. What? That seems what really kind of stupid. Is they're walks. What? They're walking hops. It looks like a roach. <laughs> 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 <laughs>